My name's Mark Toya. I'm a director and cinematographer. I'm very fortunate to be able to direct and shoot high-budget TV commercials and dabble in feature films. So the big question a lot of people ask me is, why red? There's a lot of great camera choices out there. So why do I prefer to use red digital cinema cameras over all the others? Okay, the simple answer is, and being totally upfront, I personally don't really care who makes the camera, I don't care what logo's on the side of it. It's whoever can deliver an actual raw file with huge amounts of dynamic range, at least 8K resolution, with decent frame rates. It has to be easy to use and be able to create an actual raw file that can be dropped directly into the timeline and accompanied with a really simple raw, real-time workflow. The camera has to be smallish in size, practically bulletproof, because I really give cameras a hard time, and be able to edit and grade raw files in real time without the need of transcoding. As I think in this modern age, we don't really need to do an offline edit anymore. We can edit online color grade and conform all at the same time, which saves a copious amount of time and money, which I'm sure a lot of producers would fully appreciate. With the invention of the digital stills camera, I quickly realized that raw files gave me miles of room to move. But a color-baked image in ProRes or AVC HD, H.265, TIFF or JPEG or a DPX, you're very limited in how much information you can retrieve, especially if you've overexposed in the highlights too much. Whereas red raw, you have total control of that image from a color and exposure perspective well after you've shot. And that's probably the main reason why I continue to shoot red. Red's sensor is 35 million pixels. When you open it up uncompressed, it's around 200 meg per frame in 16 bit. It's got more resolution than a lot of professional stills cameras. As far as I'm concerned, this is a stills camera that can actually shoot up to 120 frames per second in 8K, which we use for moving pictures. And another thing that's really useful is I have a lot of super 35 mil lenses from my early film days, which I still love using. Putting those lenses onto a large format sensor like the Monstro sensor or the Raptor sensor it doesn't matter anymore because even if I crop to 6K, I've still got miles of resolution and dynamic range and even faster frame rates. I lose nothing. Okay, the noise. The rubber spewed out from people stuck in old traditional film-based workflows that are struggling to grasp the future. It's time to do some myth busting and kill off some of these rumors. Okay, this is a good one. The files are too heavy to edit. Okay, it used to be hard, but now it's very simple. You can just drop a 8K RAW file directly in the timeline and edit. Not many, or hardly any, other cameras' RAW files can do this without encoding, transcoding, and reconforming. It used to be hard, but now it's all very simple. You can just drop it straight into a laptop, edit and grade in a very fluid way. Next one. The cameras are too hard to use. Okay, here we go. Let's put in the card, turn the camera on. Adjust the frame rate, adjust color temperature if needed, and not forgetting that you're in RAW, so you can change this later if you want. Adjust the ISO, and again, that you are in RAW, so you can change this later as well. So you focus, set the aperture, press record, and you are done. Yes, it's that easy. Oh, well, this is a common one. Okay, the red files are too hard to grade. Okay, here we go. Here's a RAW file dropped into a timeline. It actually looks fine already, so I'll leave it as is. Before I shoot, I turn down all the roll-offs to keep everything nice and flat, which you can do in camera or, or within the grading suite weeks, months, years afterwards. So if you forget to do it, it doesn't matter. You can do it later. Okay, let's create the ultimate nightmare. Let's completely screw up the exposure, the color temperature, the tint, everything's out. Underexposed, it's the end of the world. What are you gonna do? Okay. Simple. Drop the nightmare shot into Final Cut, Resolve, whatever you're working. Adjust the exposure. Adjust the color temperature. Adjust the tint. Do your little grade. Boom. Done. Finish. You get to live another day. If you shot the same scenario in a, in a color baked codec, you would be completely screwed. In RAW, you're now working in a, in a true professional format where you have absolute flexibility and total color control well after you've shot the project. Okay, here's another one. The images are too sharp. Okay, I'm sorry to say that camera sensors do not make images sharp. This is all lens related. If you want a sharp image, you use sharp lenses. If you want a soft creamy image, use lenses that are soft and creamy. The sensor is only going to capture what you give it. It's as simple as that. 
red can't capture skin tones properly. This is one of those crazy bullshit rumours from people that don't know what they're doing. Okay, here we go. A face. Straight out of the camera. No LUTs. No grade. It looks exactly like the person we shot on the day. There is no blotching, there's no yellows, pinks, there's no crazy anything going on. But you can cause these problems with any camera quite easily by putting on a variable ND or a polarizer or using the wrong OLPF. You will inadvertently remove natural reflections, refractions, everything that skin is made up of because skin is water. And even if one of your crew had a yellow or green t-shirt on or your model was standing next to a colored wall or you're shooting in mixed lighting, it will reflect in the skin. But remember, you're the DOP, so if you're going to shoot skin and you want it to be perfect, make sure to use very clean filters and look around and see what's reflecting or hitting the talent in the way of light. Because at the end of the day, you can't blame the camera. The only other way skin tones can get screwed up is through incorrect or bad transcoding. This happened to me a lot in the early days when I gave my red files away to post houses that did these transcodes. The raw files I had, they looked perfect. The conversions were done, everyone's faces ended up yellow and a lot of the highlights were blowing out. They're not doing any sort of proper gamma or colour balancing. You are literally screwed the moment they do this. And then they struggle to grade that colour baked file and then start blaming the camera. I've seen this happen so many times. Or if you really have to do an export for visual effects reasons, make sure your image is completely colour balanced to exactly what you shot on the day and then transcode to EXR, which is the closest thing to RAW you can get for the colorist to be able to do the best job they can. Okay, red files don't have enough dynamic range. You know what, I'm just gonna show you. Whatever your graph you use, whatever crazy science measuring devices you use, there was always gonna be conjecture from other camera companies. Fighting for a foothold, it's business, I get it. So putting bullshit aside, this is what you can get using a red file. As you can see, there's plenty of dynamic range, more than enough to do anything you need. Some people say it's 18 stops, some say it's 20, some say it's 15. Whatever it is, you have plenty. And if you work in HDR, you have even more. Resolution is not important. Now, I wonder who said that. It can't be the same person that was asked to shoot high resolution images for post-production. It can't be the same person that was asked to extract images from the moving footage to be used in a billboard or a poster or a print can't be the same person that's been asked to enlarge an image 400% in an edit because the director needed a tighter shot. It can't be the same person that's needed to key hair. It can't be the same person that's been asked by one of the TV manufacturers to shoot 8K content for their new screens. Red 8K 16-bit raw acquisition and 8K HDR delivery might be too forward thinking for a lot of people right now, but if you're a studio producer or an invested distributor wanting your films to still visually hold up in the next 20 to 30 years, giving your product a longer life expectancy, this is completely doable right now. Don't be fooled by post houses with older equipment. As I've demonstrated, you can achieve this even on a current Apple laptop. Obviously, RED delivers well ahead of current delivery requirements, which gives the camera itself longevity. Anyways, it's all food for thought as we move into the future, but it makes me wonder why people say, Resolution isn't important. So the secret of shooting red is there is no secret. The only thing you have to do is don't overexpose. Here is a really simple tip to follow. You have the ultimate light meter right there in front of you. It's a simple histogram graph. It'll tell you exactly what's going on in that scene. And the simple way to use the histogram is to keep it right. And right, I mean, have the body of light on the right hand side. If it's too far left, you're underexposed. If you're too far right, you're overexposed. Just pull it back a touch. If you see these little lights turn on, you're overexposed. It's pretty simple stuff. Just stick between these basic parameters and you'll have plenty of information to move around within your grade. So why do I choose red? Well, it's pretty logical. Irrespective of what the pixel peepers say. It's a camera that's got so much colour depth and incredible dynamic range that it can't be ignored and a ton of resolution and shoots raw that you can edit and grade in real time and not forgetting it's got great frame rates of upwards of 400 frames a second at different crops and the added bonus is the new Raptor sensor has another two stops in the blacks and another stop in the highlights to play with 
colour-baked HD or 4K acquisition compromises my creative options and from my perspective is very much 10 years ago. Red's 8K RAW file gives me far more creative options on set and in post and is the single one reason why I shoot Red. Anyways, have a great prosperous year and happy shooting everyone. Stay safe out there. Yeah?